everyone. Welcome to the Rico presentation on the integration. So my name is Nikolai and you can see me right there on the screen. A uh, quick note again on how to keep in touch with us through we are in all social media channels. Feel free to um, join us and uh, stay up to date on all the upcoming activities and the events that are happening at Rigor. Okay, so we're coming to the main part of the presentation today, which will be uh, on the 11 connections or 11 integrations of Rigor and integrations with the popular local services software. So the topic itself is made of several subject areas that uh, I'm going to go over through real quick in the agenda overview today. The, the presenters today will be Michael and Glab, and we'll talk about uh, the integrations and the connections. So there's interchangeable terms and we want to make sure that we can draw the differences between the two types of um, sort of how our software interacts with other types of software. And you can see they're listed right there uh, on the right hand side. So from the Microsoft Excel to all the way through the DocuSign. So Rigor um, can work and does work with all the different applications. Welcome everyone and uh, thank you to, to join us and uh, we will talk today about software integrations and um, uh, this is a main trend uh, of the IT nowadays and uh, uh, it's very important to understand uh, all the uh, cornerstones of this uh, very complex process. So if we talk about oil field data flow and our rigor position as a software, uh, we see that uh, uh, in many cases, Rigor become an uh, entry point or uh, the uh, source of data which uh, we can provide to uh, different systems like accounting, payroll, invoicing, uh, any, any kind of uh, uh, different, different um, uh, system which we uh, can integrate with. Uh, and the, the type of data will be invoices, reports, uh, equipment in for um, oil field service data or payroll data. And uh, the only several uh, items uh, which we can import uh, to Rigor uh, would be uh, leads uh, if we talk about the CRM integrations or equipment uh, information uh, or like sensor data uh, if uh, the client wants to show wants to show the uh, actual status of the of the equipment. It could be uh, like a fuel level or a number of hours uh, or any other uh, telemetry uh, points uh, which uh, um, the client wants to wants to show. Definitely, if we talk about integrations, uh, we talk about uh, lots of benefits and uh, the most. Um, and primary, uh, most important primary uh, benefit is fast, accurate, and easy. So uh, the um, integration eliminates a manual entering. Uh, uh, in some cases, we saw not even double, but triple or quadruple entry to the different uh, uh, spreadsheets, uh, accounting software, uh, and it's tough. Uh, definitely, uh, they streamline the process uh, and uh, make uh, all the information accurate because when you uh, do the entering everything but manually, it, it's lots of uh, room for the mistakes and uh, errors. Uh, and uh, definitely, uh, it's a significant return of investment. However, uh, we can see some barriers uh, uh, where we talk about uh, the integrations uh, uh, between two different softwares. Uh, first of all, it could be a significant cost of the integration uh, because both parties need to, to build something if uh, uh, they'd uh, like to integrate uh, one system and another. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, right now, uh, if we talk about, say, uh, two systems integrated, uh, we have a, a client, a customer, or an end user. So right now, we have a three-party dialogue uh, how uh, the system should work. So the cost could be an issue. And next uh, question, uh, it's a technical limitation. So sometimes... Um, there is a technical limitation, so uh, say we, we couldn't send uh, or they couldn't uh, take the data which uh, the client wants to transfer 
from Rigor to uh, any other systems. Uh, some of the systems are closed system. Uh, Rigor is open system. We are ready to integrate with anything, uh, and, and like with any uh, software. Now, however, uh, some of the systems are couldn't tell experience, but uh, they 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 old, uh, and uh, in some cases we couldn't. Uh, they they not even have the integration module. Uh, and uh, the process uh, uh, of the integration is very complex because uh, uh, it, it will require a lot of uh, understanding uh, and um, uh, things. Uh, and uh, another, another uh, point, uh, it's a low volume uh, of uh, data uh, exchange uh, if uh, we have uh, no significant advantage of, uh, of the data exchange. Say, for example, if we talk about the particular example CRM and rigor, uh, so we can uh, only uh, import from uh, CRM data uh, about the client. So the rest uh, will go to the rigor. So uh, as a digital platform, rigor uh, consists from several modules, uh, technical modules, uh, where we connect uh, mobile, uh, we can uh, uh, connect the emails, uh, uh, a web, uh, client portal uh, and the integrations uh, it's a fourth point uh, uh, to the connection to the uh, rigor cloud integrations could be uh, done uh, in two ways uh, the one uh, one way integration uh, means that uh, we send uh, information from primary system to the secondary system in this case, uh, uh, we build uh, the, that kind of integration using uh, Rigor and CH50 or QuickBooks. So um, uh, when we send information, we send invoices uh, from Rigor and uh, all the information goes to QuickBooks and we have nothing back. Um, so uh, otherwise, uh, um, there is a two-way integration where we can exchange information between two systems, for example, uh, QuickBooks Online and Rigor, uh, they can exchange information about um, uh, clients. Uh, and uh, if you enter client in Rigor, uh, it will be uh, it will appear in QuickBooks. The same and uh, same thing. Uh, if you edited this client in Rigor, in QuickBooks uh, after the synchronization, uh, it will be edited in Rigor. So that kind of uh, situation we call uh, two-way integration when you have no primary system. And uh, system works as a as a full synchronized uh, two way integrated uh, systems. So uh, the integration setup in Rigor it's a developed process. We uh, select the integration me method. We map items uh, in uh, Rigor and um, uh, in, for example, accounting systems. Uh, we set up bridge, install drivers and uh, triggers understand how the triggers works, uh, do the test run, and then uh, enjoy daily or weekly uh, export data and integrations. So right now we have uh, 11 integrations uh, with Rigor, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, the office uh, package, uh, email and mapping, accounting, and e-invoicing. So um, one of the questions which I'd like to ask you, um, uh, show us uh, your interest uh, or show us uh, your software which uh, you're working right now so we can uh, see um, where we need to point the, our uh, next conversation so we, we can, we can uh, talk about uh, particular software integrations. So I, I'd like to pass the mic to Gleb and uh, he will show us uh, some portion of the integrations and connections, uh, and after that, uh, I will continue. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, here's Gleb. Uh, I'm VP of, of Operations in Rigor, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, of um, integration points of Rigor with another systems, as Michael already said. And as we have seen the results of the poll, so uh, the Excel integration, like connection of the different software with the uh, Microsoft Excel software is a uh, quite popular because uh, yeah everyone is utilizing the Excel uh, nowadays. Rigor is fully capable of integrating with Microsoft Excel software by exchanging the data in 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 the Excel spreadsheets. So pretty much everything that we have in Rigor in terms of uh, different details about the uh, job or the client or Potentially and and literally every single field in in our software can be 
uh, downloaded to Excel spreadsheet. So, and uh, those of you who are using the reports in rigor uh, know that uh, we can upload, we can actually download the report into Excel and, and uh, play with the data in there uh, down the road. So, and also Excel allows us to import data in, in the, uh, from the different software to uh, rigor. Uh, by uh, creating an Excel spreadsheet and uh, we have a special templates uh, set up in the rigor so we can fill in the information in information in these templates and upload it to rigor directly so and you see on the screen that we have more than 10 uh, different templates for different kind of information that we can upload into rigor yeah as already said the reports can be um, uploaded into downloaded into uh, Excel as well. Um, currently, we're uh, finalizing the big uh, internal project of changing all the reports in the Rigor uh, application. So uh, you will be able to work with these Excel spreadsheets more wisely and uh, more easily because right now the Excel spreadsheet is built uh, with different groupings of the uh, of the information and uh, uh, filters, etc., and merging of the fields, etc. So it's kind of uh, challenging to work with the Excel spreadsheet uh, rep reports from Rigor right now. But again, we are simplifying that, and with the next release of uh, Rigor, which will be version 6.5 Houston, which will present uh, in a couple of weeks on the in the uh, oil field uh, technology conference and um, uh, in Houston. So uh, this release will present much more simple reports in terms of uh, working in Excel. Yeah, and uh, let me add this. Uh, so we have two types of uh, reports, and uh, yes, we do a big project to harmonize all the uh, reports uh, and uh, make them um, like updated. Um, uh, and um, now one of the um, point uh, will be a, a flat report, uh, which uh, uh, will be especially uh, designed for Excel expert, uh, where you can see um, and they manipulate the data and put pivot tables, etc. Uh, in Excel using data from Rigor. Uh, Microsoft Outlook connector. So again, uh, our clients know that uh, we can send uh, print forms of the documents from Rigor uh, using the Microsoft Outlook application directly. So with a click of one button, the new uh, email is will be generated. You know, so uh, and when you have a recipient in Rigor, which is the contact person of the uh, of the job. So this recipient will get this uh, email with the attachment of the print form. So it's really easy and, and just a few clicks and the document can be sent directly to the recipient. Uh, next connection that we have established uh, a few years ago is a, a Gmail connector with, which allows us to send reports and uh, email notifications uh, directly from the software. So uh, using the... Uh, Gmail account as a as a setup of uh, of this uh, function, uh, like on the background, so we can send automatically reports from regard to um, particular uh, recipients. It can be internal recipients, uh, employees of the companies like top management maybe, or it can be external recipients as well. With and every report can be sent and in in the form of PDF or Excel. Mm -hmm. So next, next thing is the email notifications that again, we're able to send every time that when the status of particular document has been changed. And you see on the screen that we have lots of different documents that we can um, include in these email notification schemes and set the particular rule uh, on which the email notifications will be sent. So in this case, you can see that if the rental agreement uh, is approved by, by senior management or by whoever is responsible for that, the e automatic email notification will be sent to, to the email of the next recipient and we can again set uh, a particular chain of the rec uh, receivers with the attachment as well. And um, these email notifications can be also customized so we can um, uh, remove some, some kind of information from this uh, email or 
on the other hand, we can include additional details. Yeah, let me give you a couple examples uh, how you can utilize uh, email notifications. Uh, so the email notifications uh, uh, can be used uh, for the sales uh, um, approval. Uh, for example, the salesperson enter new uh, rental service agreement and uh, uh, the manager has no idea uh, if any, any new uh, documents appear in the system. So uh, automatically um, the system will notify and send a notification that there is a new uh, job coming. Uh, same thing, uh, most of our clients use um, uh, identification for uh, notify operations about new uh, jobs. And this is an excellent example uh, where we have a rental agreement uh, status open, notifying that uh, we will have a particular job there. And um, uh, it could be uh, a lot of uh, comments about the particular job. So job description uh, in the comments uh, could be uh, very extensive. So yeah. this this very, very uh, useful tool. Yeah, Nikolai? Michael, yes, and uh, everyone, our guys on, on, on the line today, we just want to make sure that you get a chance to ask any question at any given time. Uh, we just try to run it today it is a little less formal because it's more of a conversation on the integrations because we, that's why we have the interactive part. And I have a question for you, Michael. Since we have a lot of people that are using accounting uh, as or identified accounting as a role for themselves, um, what kind of an application a person with that role might get in the system? Uh, in this case, um, I would say that uh, uh, if the job is ready to invoice, uh, it will be, will, will be a good trigger to uh, accountant uh, that uh, the invoice needs to, be, needs to send to the, to the client. Say, for example, um, the dispatcher um, overviewed uh, the delivery tickets or field tickets and close it and um, uh, change status to ready to invoice. So uh, after that, uh, the accountant will receive notification uh, ready to invoice and invoice the, uh, this particular um, for a job, yeah, I, yeah. I, I hear you. So that's, so, and again, notifications. Another, another, another scenario will be uh, when we talk about the DocuSign integration uh, and uh, you know, when you send invoice for approval to the client, uh, the uh, system can notify uh, the particular accountant that uh, you know, the response, we, we receive a response. So we receive the uh, signing, signing paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, also owners and uh, owners of the business as well as leadership or management can receive different kinds of notifications. They can be set up in the system again, depending on uh, if there is a critical step that has to be uh, made or has been made in the system. So they may get that as a report or a notification, I guess, either or depending on how we, when we discuss the initial setup, how we can set it up for the people. Next integration point is uh, maps connector. So, uh, Rigger can show you uh, where your equipment is at, at the maps or uh, there are other options is to show uh, where you have uh, jobs active. Those two parameters can be switched in the OFL maps and you can see the different colors of the pins on the map, meaning that the, you, you're, you're overviewing the different uh, details of uh, your uh, jobs. For example, right here we see the oil field jobs uh, pins. So in this location, we have our jobs. How this feature helps companies to to analyze the data is uh, actually on the maps. You can see where are your primary areas of operations. And for example, if you if you feel that you can expand a little bit more in the areas, and you have these capabilities and equipment available, and and, and uh, maybe uh, employees available, so this uh, visual information can show you that, okay, we can expand maybe 10 miles or 20 miles around the um, current operating area. So uh, that's actually uh, gives you understanding of, uh, yeah, actually how, how, you, how you cover your uh, closest uh, areas or oil fields, oil, oil field patches. And the uh, rental units locations is another option here is which will show you exactly uh, so you can, for example, you remember that we have delivered the equipment at some kind of territory or area, and we want to see how many uh, items on there, or if you need to schedule the relocation of your unit without being delivered back to the warehouse, you can, you can see on the map 
that okay we can we can take this equipment next week from that location and probably move directly to the next location so again it's just visual representation of your data in the system and every location can have its coordinates so basically uh, on these coordinates we can uh, set a pin on the map and also uh, you will be able to attach the link to the map if the oil and gas company or oil field um sorry oil provider gives you this, this information for example we know that for eog resources uh down in texas uh, they do have a all the maps in the pdf files on their website so you can upload this those pdfs and um, upload it to uh, rigor application so let's talk about accounting and uh, most popular quickbooks and uh, qbo uh, integrations and um, uh, here we have uh, a very simple process uh, where we can send uh, the purchase invoices to bills in quickbooks uh, and rental and service invoices to invoices in quickbooks and uh, um, this um, uh, primary uh, integration gives us an opportunity to move everything faster and smooth uh, to uh, QuickBooks. And uh, usually accounting is no, uh, do not recognize the difference between uh, manual entering invoices and voice generated from reader because they are identical, they, they, they look similar. Uh, definitely, uh, we need to adjust, uh, in some cases, uh, the invoice numbers, uh, so the numeration uh, goes down. And uh, the export data in the uh, system is very, very simple. Uh, so you select uh, a particular period, of, uh, you select a particular group of document, uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, check, mark, check mark all of them or a particular um, invoice and then uh, everything goes to uh, QuickBooks. Um, usually it takes um, uh, maybe a minute, maybe two, depending on the uh, volume of documents uh, and um, uh, connectivity between uh, databases, but uh, it's, not, it's not a uh, manual entering. Uh, and um, we highly recommend to have this uh, feature in your uh, application. With CH50, uh, accounting. Uh, it was a <laughs> kind of discovery that uh, uh, Sage 50 US at Peach Tree and uh, Sage 50 uh, Canada. Uh, simply accounting is two different uh, software actually. Yeah, they're branding as a, as a one name uh, for Sage 50, but uh, it's two different uh, applications. Uh, we have both, uh, and uh, the algorithm work, uh, working with them is pretty much the same. So we have purchase invoice, rental invoice, sales invoice sent to uh, Sage 15. Uh, a little bit different um, um, integration could be with more advanced systems, which uh, is uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, 365, for which are named... Uh, recently uh, as a business central. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, for the business central, we have two way integration and uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, points uh, where w which we connect uh, with Rigger uh, and uh, those points are clients, locations, contacts, items, uh, rental unit numbers, rental units attributes, uh, internal documents uh, uh, like um, intercompany transfers, uh, uh, item disposals, etc. Purchase documents, PO, uh, bill of lading, purchase invoices, uh, and uh, invoices, uh, rental invoices, sales invoices. The integration with uh, uh, big system uh, could be a very uh, intensive and complex um, because we need to understand not only current status of both systems, but uh, the future development of both systems. So we understand that uh, Microsoft Dynamics will develop in, in the way how they like to develop uh, and Rigor will be developing their own way. So in this case, we need to understand how this integration uh, will continue and will work. Another interesting point, uh, uh, which we build for several of our clients, uh, which have the uh, specific solutions and specific uh, applications, uh, we build universal um, accounting integrations, universal point where we can uh, export data. Uh, pretty much the same approach uh, which we use for um, QuickBooks uh, and uh, Microsoft Dynamics. However, uh, we can export almost everything to um, um, to the accounting uh, purposes. Uh, uh, one of the recent example was um, 
the uh, expert of the depreciation uh, schedule. So uh, every single month we send an uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, to the external accounting system for the uh, depreciation. Um, same points, clients, locations, items, rental units, uh, items disposal, uh, inventory counting results, uh, uh, purchase documents and invoices. Uh, ne- let's, let's talk about the next point, um, the open invoice and cortex. And um, the last, the end of the last year, the drilling in for our purchase both companies, and uh, I expect some changes in those to uh, maybe some kind of harmonization or equalization of those two solutions. So the open invoice uh, and the Cortex, uh, it's pretty much similar uh, software. So uh, and. Um, we use uh, the connector, uh, the Entermine Voice, our third-party uh, partner, uh, which uh, uh, take the information from Rigger and send the information to the particular um, uh, custom file uh, to the Open Invoice or Cortex, depending on the uh, settings. So, uh, what, how we do this thing? We set up the Entermine Voice account. We register the new user for the Cortex and Open Invoice and mapping uh, Entermine Voice with Rigger. Uh, generate email address for Rigger. It, it will be unique email address where, which we'll use to send all our files. Uh, then we select uh, first uh, buyer. Uh, it's uh, buyer uh, means uh, in, in terms of Open Invoice and Cortex. And um, uh, we build a test run and uh, check the probation uh, integration for one or two weeks. And uh, then we add uh, other, other buyers. Um, so uh, the integration process for itself, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and um, usually it uh, not require a lot of, uh, from the end user. Uh, except the end user needs to definitely check the result, the end result, and see how it works. And uh, a good thing with this integration that we not only send uh, a single invoice, but we can add the uh, PDF file as an attachment. So we send invoice and uh, a package which support this invoice. And uh, the invoice and integration, um, it's a very, very simple format. So uh, we call it submit invoices, uh, we select number of invoices, see uh, what kind of attached uh, files we have for this particular invoice, and we can select them as well and uh, build the package and the export to uh, Open Invoice or Cortex. Uh, this is a quick demo just to show you how uh, we get documents submitted into Cortex and Open Invoice. You get a unique email address assigned for that client. They send in uh, a PDF and uh, XML comes out and it just gets emailed into our system. And in about two minutes, uh, that's going to show up uh, into Cortex here. Okay, and I'll just quickly show you the XML file that was uh, inside that was used. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to open up that file. Okay, and so the uh, invoice number uh, is going to be this that gets pushed into Cortex. Okay. And then, uh, so we'll go back to our platform, refresh the screen. Okay, refresh the screen. Okay, and there's the new document that's been uh, sent to us, and it says it's already been delivered. So I'm going to go to Cortex and go refresh. And there's the invoice right there. Okay, there's the PDF, and there's all our line items. And then the client, all they need to do is scroll down, go validate and submit because we push it into the draft section. And that's it. So that, that was a, um, a short video about how the Cortex and uh, Entermine Voice works together. Um, and um, yeah, let's, let's move forward and uh, talk about our uh, recent addition to Rigger, uh, DocuSign integration. Yeah, the DocuSign integration allows you to send uh, your print forms of the documents to the receivers, to the recipients of these documents in order to dig- digitally sign it. And we have tested this uh, connection already and it's working. So uh, we just uh, 
just encourage you to use this feature if you need it. And actually how it works uh, on the step-by-step -by -step process is uh, you first generate document in the system uh, in Regramin and you uh, print the uh, document and then you'll have a uh, separate button which is DocuSign. So when you click on that button, this print form has been sent to the recipient and then recipient can go uh, over the, the this document in the DocuSign, uh, put his uh, electronic signatures, and just submit it back to Rigger. So Rigger will automatically receive this uh, signed print form of the document and upload it to the electronic document. So we have all these connections established in terms of uh, understanding how the system interacts between each other, and it works smoothly. And also, you'll get back the signed document by the uh, customer uh, representative. And in your invoices journal, or list of your invoices in Rigor, you'll see the blue sign that this uh, document has been signed by DocuSign. So, so the blue paper clip means that it's been signed, right? Correct, yes. So it gives uh, the accountant understanding that, okay, this, this invoice is done, so either it's been paid and signed or just signed. And actually DocuSign can be applied to different documents in rigor. So it can be a rental service agreement or quote or delivery and field tickets. So whatever you want to sign by uh, DocuSign application, uh, it can be uh, set up on our end. Yeah, one of the things which uh, uh, we can do uh, for the DocuSign, uh, we could, could collect not uh, uh, only the signatures, but uh, the say EFE numbers uh, or any uh, um, numbers which are usually presented on the stamp, uh, like PO numbers, CC numbers, etc. And um, it's possible, and uh, we love to to do that. Uh, uh, so and streamline the the entire approval process, which become a very huge issue because right now when you send something to the engineer, the engineer needs to print it, test check it, uh, uh, sign and scan and send it back. And usually it takes weeks. Uh, so, so to speed up this process, uh, some of our clients ask us to build this integration and uh, we more than happy that to share with this, uh, the entire rigor community. Now, can I ask a question then, a real quick one for the people that are on the line with us today and they're interested in the DocuSign integration. So what are the requirements on the client, the Rigor client end, so the people that are using Rigor right now? So do they need to communicate uh, the DocuSign requirements to their customers, to the operators? Or what is their first step, I guess, to, um, to implement such a paperless uh, signature uh, process? For the invoices, yes, I would say I would say the the initial step uh, would be uh, that kind of uh, un uh, understand the situation if uh, the oil company will accept these signatures, because uh, it's not uh, um, like it's not usual for now, uh, and uh, it could be a it could be an issue. Yeah, so, but, but the, from the practical standpoint, the process looks like uh, our customer, rigor customer refers to us and we just uh, send the instructions. So the first thing that should be is to set up the DocuSign account and then the customer will, will get the technical information about the account, like SKU number, and then we connect this number to uh, rigor account. And the only thing that the customer should do is to provide us the requirements in which particular uh, places in the document they want to see the uh, electronic signatures. Yeah. In this yeah. way, we set up the print forms and it will, be, it will be done individually for every customer. So we can customize every single print form. And then um, most of the job are done on the rigor side. So the, the only requirement will be just to provide us uh, yeah, particular requirements.
One other thing which uh, uh, we need to consider first to uh, move forward, uh, just to understand uh, what kind of volume uh, of the of the documents we will have uh, for the DocuSign integration, and uh, uh, this will define the cost of uh, the DocuSign integration, because uh, the DocuSign charge per per envelope. Uh, and uh, the minimum uh, number of envelopes uh, uh, should be 500, Gleb? Yes, 500 per year. And mm -hmm. uh, what we mean under the envelopes, and actually DocuSign uh, states this, envelope is a document with multiple pages. So it can be invoice with five pages, or it can be a delivery ticket with two pages. So they don't count the pages, they, they count uh, envelopes. Kind of a transaction, transaction of one one signature on a document, multi-page document or one-page document. Yes. Okay. And again, uh, DocuSign it could be not only signatures but uh, initials, uh, and it really depends. Uh, uh, it's not only uh, tickets or invoices. It could be uh, rental agreements for some clients uh, if they prefer to have uh, initials for a particular terms, uh, say insurance or something like that uh, to you know, to protect uh, legally uh, the equipment. And, uh, any, any process can be done uh, in a good and a bad way. So we'd like to share our experience about the best practices of the integration with different solutions. So uh, the integration usually uh, is uh, um, included to the, uh, our implementation process, or in some cases we can move integration to the second or third stage, uh, depending on the complexity of the implementation process. Because uh, for us, uh, the main uh, goal is to um, track equipment and generate invoices. Uh, and uh, when we understand that everything works smoothly, uh, when we're ready to uh, do the integration. And we have some examples where clients uh, uh, just to build the integration after two years of usage of rigor, which is probably most uh, extreme um, a case, uh, but usually uh, it's become after the one or two months uh, of uh, usage of rigor. Glib. So yeah, usually it happens when uh, the willing of, of doing the integration of rigor with accounting system comes from the uh, comf comfortability of working with the system, with rigor in this case, and when the company is, is uh, 100% comfortable with generating the documents. And actually the invoice, as you may already know, that it's the final and, and a result of all the previous jobs done uh, in the rigor. I mean, the rental service agreement and delivery tickets. So because the invoice is, is the result of the delivery tickets and rental service agreement being generated previously. So when all these documents are put correctly, the invoice will be calculated accurately and, and, and uh, correctly. So, and when the company sees that, uh, okay, we are absolutely good with the invoices, so every single invoice that is generated by the system is correct, and we, we absolutely agree with this. So in this case, uh, usually integrations comes to the point and uh, we do it smoothly because, again, everything is set up between systems, so... Uh, and we just need to to set up the transfer of the information between systems. Yeah, one, one of the reasons why we insist to um, uh, run uh, the full cycle of invoicing uh, for the month, because uh, uh, in some cases it could be some missing information in the invoicing um, for the integration. Say, for example, a very... Uh, often uh, we see that uh, mm, when we import data uh, to rigor, we're missing some services. The end user need to um, add those services to the uh, final invoice. And uh, yeah, we, we'd like to invite you to our next webinar, um, which will be next week, uh, same time. And uh, for the next, uh, ne next topic will be uh, the rental flip combinations. Uh, packages, combo units, assemblies, uh, uh, and single lead rental units, uh, tracking and pricing, uh, this very interesting and complex uh, problem, uh, which uh, we uh, resolve in rigor every day. And uh, so, yeah, join us next, uh, next webinar. And thank you for joining us today. And uh, yeah, this is a 
the last chance to ask you uh, questions. And uh, we'd like to invite you, if you'd like to meet uh, in person, we'd like to invite you to the uh, Offshore te uh, Technology Conference uh, in Houston, uh, Texas uh, in two weeks, uh, almost in two weeks, three weeks, three weeks from now. So me, me, uh, six, nine. So uh, we will present a new version uh, of Rigor and uh, we will discuss new features and uh, yeah, we'll love to talk to you and meet with you in person. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up the session for today and uh, we are looking forward to seeing you next week. We're going to be talking about the combinations of the equipment that you manage every day in your rental processes.